Welcome back to the final section of our cool project. Till the moment I've enjoyed so much building that nice UI and application with Blazor. Hope you enjoyed the same. Now we'll start with the authentication with Microsoft, creating the application and register it in Blazor Active Directory and Azure Active Directory, so we can authenticate our application against and request the permissions from the user to allow us to access uh, his or her calendar to read and write from it, to bring all the events from the Microsoft uh, Graph API. And also regarding the login and logout, Microsoft in a previous uh, release for Blazor, uh, they have made the authentication process built in, especially with Azure Active Directory. Uh, they are using Microsoft Authentication Library for GS, and it handles all the client-side logic you want. You just need to create your application, register it in your Azure Active Directory, and you are ready to go. So let's get started to see how we can achieve this. I'll go to portal.azure.com. Log in with my account. Okay. I'm extremely likely. Okay, send thank me for our feedback. I'll go to Azure Active Directory and then I'll go to App Registration. Now to create a new app. I'll call it Blazor Outlook Calendar Client. Now, the supported account types we have single tenant and multi tenant with Microsoft personal accounts. Single tenant means this application will authenticate against the user that are existing within my Azure Active Directory only, my tenant, single. This one is used for line, uh, business line of applications. When there is an enterprise wants to build an app, they uh, put their users within a specific Azure Active Directory and the authentication will be against that tenant. While in our case, we want to have access to all Microsoft accounts, more than 700 million accounts, so we'll use multi-tenant and Microsoft personal Microsoft accounts. Now, what is the type of our application? We'll choose single page application and the redirect URL that will receive the access token pack from Microsoft. It's going to be the URL of our application, localhost 5001 slash authentication slash login callback. This URL is built in when you add the Azure Active Directory authentication in Blazor that handles the authentication process and the access token. Click register. Okay. Now I will go to authentication. Then here for that application we need access token and ID tokens. Let's click save. Nice. Now we will go to API permissions because we want to ask for the calendar permissions. By default, Microsoft Graph gives you the user dot read permission which retrieves the username, full name, profile picture and whatever. So we'll click on add permission. Choose Microsoft APIs, choose Microsoft Graph application permissions and here you have all the permissions that Microsoft Graph provides. So choose on uh, calendars, here it is, and I will choose calendars dot read and write. Don't add. We are done. This is everything we want to do. Now let's go to overview. Here we have this client ID. Copy it and go back to Visual Studio Code. Now go to www root folder, open app settings.json, as you can see here. This is initialized by default with the Microsoft template, the Blazor Web Assembly template. I will paste the client ID here, and this one is the tenant ID of your Active Directory if you are authenticating against a specific directory. But in my case, 
I'm authenticating against all Microsoft accounts, multi-tenants and personal accounts. So we put common, this one for all multi-tenant and personal accounts, put slash common. Yeah. Now, uh, okay, the comment's not accepted. Permitted in JSON. Okay, we can remove it. Now, if you go to program.cs, here, add Microsoft Authentication Library, the authentication, add the, everything related to authentication here, and it brings the configuration from the app setting to the JSON file. We need to ask for permissions only. This is everything we should do. So to add the permissions, options dot provider options dot default access token scopes. Permissions called scopes as well. Click on add. Let's add the ID of that scope. Now go here. Go to API permissions to bring the ID of the scope, click here, and bring that one. Just copy it. Now paste it here. Uh, we don't need this one. Ask only for one uh, permission. This is all everything related to the authentication process. Pretty easy. Just a few minutes, few clicks, and you are done. Now regarding the access token, Microsoft is also handled that for you and you will see this when you will bring or fetch the events from the Graph API. Now I will build the project, then run it. Okay, let's go here, Click refresh. And for this button, yes, I've remembered something in the pages index. By default, it was like this. So change this to become authentication slash login. Or you can log in directly from here from the login display component that Microsoft already created before. Now, if we go to authentication slash login, everything is ready as I've said. As you can see, it will redirect ask me to that let this app access your info, have full access to your calendar, view your basic profile. I'll say yes. Let this app access all of that. Now we are ready. Let's grab that. And here we go. Hello, Ahmed Muzaffar and the login with Microsoft button has been disappeared. I will also hide the this component, the calendar with the side menu here for the not authenticated users. Now let's do this. Start the app. And then the the tracer. I will copy this, paste it here. At the end for not authorized, authorized view, this one will be only for authorized, not the opposite. Okay, great. In this case, only the authorized users have access for the content. Now, can check it for the last time, dot net run. Fresh. There we go. I'm authenticated right now. Click on log out. Log me out from this account. Okay, it's a good idea to close all your browser window. I will not close my browser window. Go back here. As you can see, no calendar, 
and this button appears again. Click on it. Ah, it's not existing. Here we go. This is the calendar, this is the menu, this is toolbar, whatever, everything just working perfect. Now for the next video, we will start by using the access token that we get from Microsoft and fetching all the events from the Microsoft Graph for a whole month. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And see you in the next video.